Beside the beautiful Rui Li River, there is a village named Han Cha. It attracts tourists from all over the world with its unique South Asian tropical scenery. In the village lives an unusual peasant, the famous folk dancer Yue Xiang, also known as the Peacock King. Yue Shang has loved dancing since childhood, especially the peacock dance. The peacock dance is called Galu Yong in the Dai language, which means the peacock hops. Yu Shang learned from the dance master Mao Shang. He studied the peacock dance with Mao Shang for many years. Integrated with Mao Shang's peacock dance into Shishuang Ban La's peahen dance, Yu Shang's peacock dance boasts both the masculinity of the peacock and the femininity of the peahen. Thus, he is called the peacock king. Yu Shang is occupied with farming every day, but he finds time to tutor dancers and perform for tourists. He never charges for this. In his own words, he just hopes his dance can help more and more people understand and protect the peacock and also love for his people. Southeast China is a colorful land. The Dai people have lived there since ancient times. They live by the rivers and next to the mountains, and their image is always connected with water. The Dai people in the south once established a country centered on Bana, called Jinlong Golden Hall of Kingdom, or Mengle, meaning the kingdom of the peacock in the Dai language. Thousands of years later, the offspring of the kingdom still lives on in this beautiful land. Looms like this are common in Dai villages and bamboo buildings. The Dai girls learn weaving at an early age, and nearly every household has a spinning wheel and a loom. The loom is made of a wooden frame and a treadle below for control. The Dai brocades are usually made by interweaving cotton yarns with colorful flosses. Modern looms are used to make tongpa, which is a type of shoulder bag. The Dai women take pains to weave tongpa with various wools and colorful silk threads. It is not only a big part of their daily life, but also an exquisite handicraft when the Dai people in Minghai sacrifice to the god of the village. They must carry tongpas. The same is true when they go to the market or present offerings to Buddha. Exquisite and colorful, Tong Pa's are also a favorite souvenir of tourists. Mm -hmm. 
Silverware is also the traditional handicraft of the dye people. It wins dye women's hearts with its fine workmanship, exquisite pattern, and beauty. Generally speaking, dye silverware falls into three categories, religious, practical, and decorative. Silver trees and silver flowers are the most exquisite handicrafts and sacred offerings for the Buddha. Of course, the most common works are silver decorations, which are held dear by the Dai women, such as silver hairpins, bracelets, earrings, and waistbands. With rich artistic creativity, the silversmiths create numerous patterns by threading, molding, and soldering. From Shishuang Banla to Dai Hong, from Genma to Jinggu, people will find that almost every village has a Buddhist pagoda. Buddhism was introduced to the Dai region about the first century BC. The type of Buddhism that reached the Dai region was called Hinayana, also known as Southern Chan School or Southern Buddhism. In Shishuang Banla, it was called Peta Shashana or Peta Pasha in Dai Hong. After being introduced into the Dai region, it was integrated with primitive local beliefs and formed its own unique form of Buddhism. It became distinct from Tibetan Buddhism and Han Buddhism and eventually became known as Dai Buddhism. Dai Buddhism has many popular religious activities. As almost all Dai people are born Buddhist disciples, these activities are always on a grand scale. They are concentrated in several large religious festivals. Jashawa begins on September 15th of the Dai calendar. Buddhism sermons begin on this day and last for three months. During this period, monks are forbidden from leaving the temple and are never allowed to stay over in the village. It is believed that only after the door of the secular world is closed can monks understand and master Buddhism. December 15th marks the end of this period and it is the day that monks can return to their secular lives after three months of hard study. Another important ritual is Henglu Jiao, the ceremony in which boys become monks. 
In Buddhist regions, especially Xizhuang Banla, boys over seven years old must shave their heads and serve as monks for some time. Later, they can be secularized or remain in the temple for their life according to the family condition or their own decision. A man who's never been a monk is regarded as uncivilized. In this case, he would be discriminated against and would have great trouble finding a wife. The Dai woman's traditional costume is complicated. It is usually made up of a colorful embroidered tight pink vest, a round collared short coat, and a flowery pleated sarong running down to the instep. The Dai women always coil their hair and wear a patterned silver waistband. Their coats are thin in the waist and flow out at the bottom and the sleeves are long and slender. Their sarongs are soft and brightly colored and are tied under the breast, setting off the lovely figures of the Dai women. Dai women's hairstyles, long sarongs, and tight vests are all full of ethnic characteristics. Their slender figures transform even such common scenes like farming and water drawing into elegant pictures.傣族呢它内部分为不同的支系根据它分布地域的不同呢我们把它分为傣乐傣纳和傣亚那么汉族呢这个根据傣族的这个不同风俗特点啊把傣乐呢称为水傣啊把傣纳呢称为汉傣把
Dai people have many dances. The loveliest ones are imitative dances such as the peacock dance, the white elephant dance, and the butterfly dance. The Dai people regard the peacock as the most beautiful and kind of all creatures. It is the symbol of happiness and prosperity. They show love for their own culture via the peacock dance. Besides the peacock dance, the elephant foot drum dance is another famous Dai dance. It is a collective dance that includes young and old, male and female. The drum resembles the elephant's foot. The drum body is carved out of the kapok or mango trunk, and the bull hide drum head is stretched with the bull tendon for volume control. The elephant foot drum comes in different sizes, long, medium, and short. performances, the drum tail is decorated with peacock feathers. With the drums swung across the bodies and their knees bent, they beat the drums while dancing various steps. The dance includes forward steps, backward steps, and kneeling. People dance with vigor and joy to the rhythm of the drums. Regardless of whether it is the elephant foot drum dance or the peacock dance, we can all feel the harmony between the Dai ancestors and nature through the simplicity of their artistry. In the 14th century, the Dai created an opera style known as the Dai Opera.
After 500 years, the Thai opera gradually matured and flourished. Out of this art form came classic operas such as Yi Bing and Shang La, Ma Shi Shuang, Dream of the Red Chambers, and Liao Tsai. <laughs> The dining is full of artistic inspiration, unique ethnic music, dances, costumes, and even paper cuts are works of art. Paper cutting is common in the villages. Dai women's dexterous hands create objects such as flowers, insects, mountains, rivers, and animals in paper cuts. Paper cuts used in religious rituals always take the form of pagodas, Buddhist figures, bodhi trees, peacocks, elephants, and some are even cut from gilded foils. These brilliant paper cuts feature a unique dye artistic style. Religious paper cuts are used in offerings and are usually exquisitely patterned and skillfully cut. Dai people also created elegant palaces, temples, and pagodas with their wisdom and dexterity. These beautiful ancient buildings are scattered along river banks and plains. Dai are a people closely associated with water. Large-scale water splashing festivals are staged every June 6th, New Year's Day in the Dai calendar. Passion and excitement abound during this grand festival. The first day of the festival is called Sankan Day, literally the day to bid farewell to the past. Old men make vows before Buddha. They pray for prosperity and peace for their children. Young men pick fresh flowers from the mountains and offer them around the water dragon pavilion while making wishes. Others queue up to pour water from their bamboo into troughs beside the pavilion, which is a symbolic bath for the Buddha. People strive to gather water that trickles from the Buddha statue into bamboo containers. Some drink it, while others wash their face or hands with it in order to be blessed. During the water splashing festival, each household will take turns treating their neighbors to feasts.
During this time, women never eat at the table, and girls and women must dress themselves up before they go out. In some areas, dragon boat races are also to be staged. Competitors come from villages along the Lansung River, such as Jinhong and Ganaba. Each boat has 20 strong men as rowers, and in recent years, Dai girls have also joined in. The last day of the Water Splashing Festival is known as the King of Days, and it is the first day of the new year. Legend has it that once upon a time, there was a ferocious devil who brought deep afflictions to the people. The devil kidnapped seven girls to be his wife. His seventh wife befuddled him with rice wine and strangled him with his own hair. But the moment the devil's head fell to the ground, fire flared up picked the head up and the fire went out. The girls were forced to take turns to hold the devil's head once a year. At the day shift, the dye people welcome their brave daughter with clean water to drive away her fatigue and wash away the dirt. From then on, the dye people have had their own festival, the Water Splashing Festival. The clear water is the symbol of sanctity. It is splashed on relatives and guests with well wishes and blessings.